Today we're going to talk about partial flumes, how they work, how to get an accurate measurement from them, and whether or not they are properly functioning. So the first thing we want to do is identify the size of the partial flume. And we know this is a partial flume because we have this contracted throat section here in the middle, which is characteristic of all partial flumes. Now these types of flumes always have a converging section with a flat floor, water moves through a crest, through that throat section we talked about, and then out a diverging section to the end of the flume. So when we walk up to a flume in the field, uh, we want to always make sure that water is going down the flume and not around or underneath the flume. So a quick visual inspection at the top end of the flume uh, will let us know if that water is actually moving through the flume. Also, we want to make sure that water is moving somewhat even and tranquil as it enters that flume and it's not a high, high turbulent flow. Okay, now that we've established that we have a, a good approach to this flume, that the flow is tranquil, uh, another aspect of ensuring that we have proper functioning condition in this partial flume is to make sure that we are in a free flow condition. And that's pretty easy to tell in a partial flume visually. Uh, if you have a standing wave, uh, like we're looking at right here in the throat here, if you have a standing wave that exists, a frothy wave across the channel, that's an indication that you are in a free flow condition. Ideally, you would like that standing wave to be somewhere below that throat section, but in this case, it still looks like it's in free flow. As that wave migrates up flume, it'll start to submerge the flume, and at that point, you will no longer be in a free flow condition. Okay, last thing we want to check to make sure this is a properly functioning flume is the level. Uh, these, these things have to be put in level, and typically you'd like to, to, to check your level on the floor of the flume as it approaches that crest. That's not always possible when you have water. Uh, so what I typically do, and I like to go right across the throat of the flume, I'll just set my level down across the throat, make sure that it's level, and then also do it lengthwise, find a good spot you can put the flume lengthwise to make sure it's level, and then uh, we're good to go. Couple things about staff gauge with partial flumes to ensure you're getting an accurate measurement are first of all that the staff gauge is actually on the bottom of the flume itself and then it is placed a distance of two thirds up from the crest of the weir to the, the beginning of the flume. Okay, so now that we have uh, made sure that this is a properly functioning partial flume, last thing we want to do is get our discharge measurement. We need two things for that uh, to get a discharge measurement. One is we need to know the size of the flume, and secondly, we need to know what the stage is or the staff gauge reading of the water moving through the flume. So to determine the size of the flume, for partial flumes, they're always designated by the width of the contracted throat section here. In this case, it's one and a half feet. And then we just take, simply take a reading off the staff gauge uh, it's, it's always in feet, intensive feet. In this case, it's 0 0.51 feet. We looked that up on our table, a table, rating table, could be from a manual, could be an online table that you get for a one and a half foot partial flume. And in this case, our discharge is gonna be 2.13 cubic feet per second. So the four things you wanna check when you're using a partial flume are to make sure that water's not flowing around or under your flume Make sure that the flume is level lengthwise and crosswise. Make sure you're in a free flow condition and make sure that your staff gauge has been properly placed. 